Hey guys, welcome back to Relentless Hockey. My name is Kyle, and today we're going over a complete workout sequence that hockey players can use to really take their strength and conditioning to the next level in the gym. If you're a hockey player, you need to be focused on having well-structured training, and in this video, we're gonna go over the exact structure that we use with our elite and pro players, and that you can use whether you're at the gym, at home, or on the road. Okay, so before we jump into any sort of strength workout, it's important that we have a couple of components first. First, we have to have a very high quality warm-up. So warm-ups are essential to staying healthy, maintaining tissue quality over a course of a long season. And so whether it's in the off season or in season, getting in a high quality warm up is important. And those habits are really important to taking your game to the next level. Number two is prehab or activation work. So this is where we'll typically bring out mini bands. We'll do a lot of very specific tailored custom work uh, to really be able to start to activate some of the muscles that we'll use in our workout or start to address some of the imbalances that a player might have. So some of that stuff you can find through our YouTube channel in, in our activation warm up videos. But those are two very important components. And then our third component is our athleticism work and this is really tailored to hockey players in that we're focusing on a lot of movement we're working on agility we're working on change of direction and we're really doing deliberate work that will translate on the ice and it's important to be able to do that fresh so before you get into your strength work you want to make sure that you're doing very high quality athleticism work and really focusing on getting better at that specific thing then we'll move into our strength work and this is what we're going to focus on today is the exact structure that we use with all of our players and the structured workouts that you can be using at home okay so we break down our workouts into blocks and so typically a workout will have a block A, a block B, and then maybe even a block C depending on the day. And so this is what you would conventionally call a superset. We have two to three exercises that are done very synergistically. So they're exercises that go very well together. And it's not just to kind of get the ultimate burn, but they're working very synergistically to create the ideal response that we're looking for. So we're gonna get into our block A, which includes a deadlift, a jump, and a press. And it's really important to have these exercises back to back to back and not having long leg times in between exercises. So our first exercise, we have the trap bar deadlift. And we love the trap bar specifically because it puts hockey players in a much more natural position where we can draw our shoulder blades back and really have a nice aligned spine. But if you don't have a trap bar, that's fine. You can still use a conventional bar. And sometimes we'll even have hockey players go into a little bit more of a sumo deadlift uh, just so they can get a very strong rigid back. But for us, we're gonna set up in our trap bar deadlift and we're just gonna make sure that we have nice, strong, clean pulls and right back down. You're gonna wanna perform this for six to eight reps. And so that's our first exercise and we're gonna be crushing through that very focused and very deliberately. And then immediately after, we're gonna go into jump. So these are two exercises that have to happen very back and forth. So as soon as we get out of there, we're going to a squat jump and you just need a little bit of space here and you're just loading up from your hips and then jumping as high as you can every single rep. So these are two exercises that we've specifically put together because they are very synergistic. So even though you might feel like you might have a little bit of a fatigue burn because you're in a six and a six or a five and a five rep scheme, we're actually gonna be focusing on firing as much as possible because it has a very strong CNS response. So when we're focusing on our deadlift, we're focusing on driving as much as we can and then in our jump we're not rushing them we're having some sort of conditioning jump we're having a very deliberate powerful jump all right so after we've done those two exercises we're now actually going to go to an upper body exercise with a half kneel press and this is an awesome exercise because we've had a lower body pull we use a press here because you get a very strong movement and it's actually a little bit more of a break so in this case we're going to set up into a half kneel press and then just focusing on on having a very strong torso and just having a straight up press and straight back down and this is an exercise that you can really begin to load up very heavy because you are in a very braced position. So as long as we're not having some sort of rib flare and we're, we've pulled everything down, a strong heavy press here is actually really what we're looking for. So this is an exercise you can do for six to eight reps. And if you're not so big on that shoulder press, you could move over to something like a chest press. We really like an incline chest press because it kind of combines some shoulder and chest work. But having some sort of press here is very valuable. All right, so that's our block A. And those are exercises that you should be doing back to back to back with very minimal rests, especially between the deadlift and jump. Those have to be done immediately after one another. And then we take a break. So we want hockey players to take a nice long break here of 60 to 90 seconds and make sure that our heart rates come down. If you were wearing a heart rate sensor, I'd say something in that 60% range where we've really come to relax before getting into our next work. A lot of hockey players think that a superset has to be this nonstop work, but when we're doing specific strength work or specific power work like we're doing here in our jump, we wanna make sure that we're going into it rested. So take some time. If it's 60, if it's 90, if it's 120 seconds, you wanna make sure that you're going into your next block or next set rested. All right, so we're gonna move on to our block B and hopefully you've done anywhere between three and four sets of our block A. And now we're gonna move into a little bit faster pace. So if you were taking nice long breaks in that first set, that's awesome because now in this one, we're gonna shorten our rest time and really try and keep it consecutive. So we have four exercises, which means we're probably gonna have a little bit more of a conditioning response here, which is good, that's what we want. So we're gonna get into our first exercise, which is a half kneel row. And this could be replaced with a lot of different row exercises. It could be even replaced with a, a chin up and inverted rows and TRX rows. But for our case, we're gonna use a half kneel row because it's a nice opportunity 
opportunity to do a unilateral exercise in our upper body. And so we're gonna be down on our half kneel, very similar to our press. And then as soon as we're ready to have that pull, I'm engaging my lats and I'm having a strong pull down and then letting go. So I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm maintaining my torso the entire time here and I'm not rotating, I'm not jerking it back. And then I'm using a weight that's gonna be able to challenge me without kind of breaking my form here. All right, so for our next exercise, we have a four-way lunge. And this is an awesome exercise for hockey players because it not only puts them in the lunge position, but it puts them in a lot of different lower body positions that are very valuable to be able to translate on ice. So we're gonna grab two weights. They don't have to be very heavy. You can even do this body weight, but in our case, we're just gonna use some 15s. And we're gonna be focusing on controlling all of our positions. So our first one, we have a lateral lunge. Again, I'm maintaining my position nice and strong with an upright torso. I have a skater lunge where I'm kind of going at like a 45 degree angle, very similar to that skater stride. I have a reverse lunge where I want to make sure that I'm focused on having my knee over my ankle and toes. And then we have a crossover or a curtsy lunge where I'm gonna try and get out as far as I can, hold and come back up. So it's important that you really maintain strong positions, not only in your torso where we wanna have that upright chest, but also in our knees. So we wanna make sure that we're not going too far over our toes, which isn't our biggest concern, but we're not flaring in. And this is something we'll see in a lot of hockey players that they try and create strength by flaring their knee in. And this messes up a lot of our nice clean positions. So those are focuses that in all of our lunges, we wanna make sure we're maintaining that knee, hip, ankle kind of stack and really staying organized in our lower body. All right, so our next exercise is suitcase carry. And this is a super valuable exercise for hockey players because it really creates that strong brace trunk and is a phenomenal core exercise. So we're gonna grab something fairly heavy here. We wanna make sure that it's heavy enough that it is forcing us into some sort of side flexion and that we have to kind of maintain that brace position and kind of fight against that, but not so heavy that we're struggling or that we've jacked up our shoulder to try and control the weight. All right, so a fairly heavy load that we can really maintain our, our core position and that we're not gonna lose our grip strength. So in our case, we're gonna walk about 20 meters or 20 yards and really focusing on staying braced with our shoulders back the entire sequence and just maintaining our position the entire time. So we wanna make sure that as we're walking, we're not flaring out, we're not pushing out our hips and that we've maintained everything nice and tall and nice and strong. All right, so our next exercise is a dead bug and this is probably one of our favorite core exercises for hockey players because again, it's super valuable in training that very brace strong position. So for me, I'm gonna grab a 25. You could go heavier. We've seen players kind of use that 35, but typically it's not too far beyond that because we wanna make sure that we're doing our exercise with perfect reps. So I'm gonna get set up on the ground and really making sure that through the entire exercise, I'm forcing my back down. So this exercise is so valuable because the dead bug, as we start to go overhead with the weight, it kind of lifts off our ribs. We naturally wanna have that open rib position. And for us, we wanna make sure that we're forcing against that. So as we open up, we're actually forcing down our ribs the entire time and really staying braced. This is why this exercise is so valuable is because it's not actually moving in the trunk. We're not doing any crunches or anything like that. We're just fighting against that open rib position. And if you think about being on the ice, it's one of those positions where if you get knocked back and you open up those ribs, you lose your whole brace position and oftentimes you'll lose your body position. So we wanna make sure in this exercise that we're staying very braced and focused the whole time. All right, so we love this structure because it allows you to get very specific and focused work in. And if you notice, we actually included all of our five primary movement patterns. We had our deadlift, we had a squat, we had a push, a pull, and we also had our lunge. And those are the five movement patterns that you should be incorporating in all of your workouts. So even if you wanted to use this structure and play around with it, make it a little bit more squat focus or a little bit more lunge focus, you still wanna make sure that you're getting all five of those movement patterns in in every single workout. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we were putting out a ton of educational-based content to really help you take your performance to the next level. So we encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, throw us a subscribe, because if you enjoyed this, we know you're gonna enjoy some of the content that we've got coming out. And then also head over to Relentless Hockey. We're putting out a ton of programs very similar to this that actually build on and make it a little bit more complex, but we're also putting out a ton of free articles, guides, and giveaways to really help you take your performance to the next level. Stay relentless.